Hi, my name is Talia Nasi, and I'm a Senior Developer Advocate here at AWS Serverless. This video is about managing performance and scale in your Lambda and DynamoDB applications. First, we'll take a look at managing concurrency for your Lambda functions, and then we'll go over the different capacity modes in DynamoDB. Managing concurrency is an important aspect of running Lambda functions. Concurrency is the number of requests that your function is serving at any given time. When your function is invoked, Lambda allocates an instance of it to process the event. When the function code finishes running, it can handle another request. However, if the function is invoked again while a request is still being processed, another instance is allocated, which increases the function's concurrency. There's two types of concurrency controls available, reserved concurrency and provision concurrency. Reserved concurrency guarantees the maximum number of concurrent instances for the function. When a function has reserved concurrency, no other function can use that concurrency. Provisioned concurrency initializes a requested number of execution environments so that they're prepared to respond immediately to your function's invocations. To enable your function to scale without fluctuations in latency, use provisioned concurrency. By allocating provisioned concurrency before an increase in invocations, you can ensure that all requests are served by initialized instances with very low latency. If you don't know what capacity to set, or you need some assistance in setting capacity, another option is application auto-scaling. You can use this through the CLI or cloud formation, but not directly in the Lambda console. You set a minimum capacity and maximum capacity together with a target utilization. The service will then respond to changes in demand and scale your provision concurrency appropriately. So for Lambda, you have reserved concurrency, provision concurrency, and auto-scaling. For DynamoDB, you have two capacity modes for processing reads and writes on your tables, provisioned and on-demand. The read and write capacity mode controls how you pay for read and write throughput and how you manage capacity. With provisioned mode, you specify the number of reads and writes per second that you require for your application. You can use automatic scaling to adjust the table's provision capacity automatically in response to traffic changes. This helps to govern your DynamoDB use to stay at or below a defined request rate to obtain cost predictability. Provisioned mode is a good option if you have predictable application traffic or you run applications whose traffic is consistent or ramps gradually. With on-demand mode, DynamoDB accommodates workloads as they ramp up or down. If a workload's traffic level reaches a new peak, DynamoDB adapts rapidly to accommodate the workload. On-demand mode is a good option if you create new tables with unknown workloads or you have unpredictable application traffic. Additionally, it can be a good option if you prefer paying for only what you use. Let's dive deeper into each of these modes and see how DynamoDB manages your throughput. With provisioned capacity mode, you specify the maximum amount of read and write capacity for a table, and then you use automatic scaling to adjust your table's provision capacity automatically in response to traffic changes. Here's a CloudWatch monitoring view of a provision capacity and usage. If your capacity is set too low, it impacts your availability. But if your capacity is set too high, then it becomes a financial waste. With DynamoDB auto-scaling, you set it and forget it. With a regular SQL database, your constraints are how fast is your machine and how big is your hard disk. With DynamoDB, you don't need to worry about either of those things because it scales automatically. On-demand capacity mode lets you bypass capacity planning. It offers a simple pay-per-request pricing for read and write requests so that you only pay for what you use, making it easy to balance costs and performance. For tables using on-demand mode, DynamoDB instantly accommodates customers' workloads as they ramp up or down to any previously observed traffic level. If the traffic hits a new peak, DynamoDB adapts rapidly to accommodate the workload. This eliminates the trade-offs of over-provisioning, where you waste money by paying for capacity, and under-provisioning, which affects your availability. So how do you know which mode is right for you? If you choose provisioned mode, you specify the number of reads and writes per second that you require for your application. You can use auto-scaling to adjust your table's provision capacity automatically in response to traffic changes. This helps you govern your DynamoDB use to stay at or below a defined request rate in order to obtain cost predictability. 
Provision mode is a good option if you have predictable application traffic, you run applications whose traffic is consistent or ramps gradually, or you can forecast capacity requirements to control costs. With on-demand mode, DynamoDB instantly accommodates your workloads as they ramp up or down to any previously reached traffic level. If a workload's traffic level hits a new peak, DynamoDB adapts rapidly to accommodate the workload. On-demand mode is a good option if you create new tables with unknown workloads, you have unpredictable application traffic, or you prefer the ease of paying for only what you use. In this video, you learned about optimizing your Lambda and DynamoDB applications. You learned about the differences between Lambda provision concurrency and reserved concurrency and DynamoDB on-demand capacity mode and provision capacity mode. To learn more about Lambda and DynamoDB, head to serverlessland.com where you'll find more content from me and my team. I'm Talia Nasi. Thanks for tuning in.